Welcome to this video. This video uh, explains briefly the concept of voltage current curves and how you can use them to find solutions to circuits, that is to find voltages and currents in a circuit when one of the circuit elements is nonlinear. This approach that we're talking about typically applies to steady state analysis, at least in the form that we're going to talk about it. Um, so we're assuming that voltages and currents in the circuit are not changing, that we've reached a steady state. So let's begin. Uh, to start with, you'll notice that we have uh, uh, an element of a circuit. Uh, this could be a linear element. Typically, it's a nonlinear element. And we have the current going into the element, labeled I, and the voltage across the element, labeled V. And we have, over here, the rest of the circuit. This is basically everything in the circuit except the element. And for now, we're really not going to worry much about what that is. Uh, in subsequent videos, we might perhaps. But uh, for right now, that's basically just the rest of the circuit. And the idea is that we can characterize an element in a circuit in terms of a voltage current curve. And so we draw a voltage current curve like this. We have a voltage axis, axis, and we have a current axis. And the idea is that most circuit elements that you'll deal with constrain the voltage across them and the current through them to conform to some rule that we can express as some sort of line on this voltage current curve. Okay. Now, in this curve, V is not considered to be an independent variable, uh, nor is I. The idea is that um, our element will constrain the relationship between the voltage across it and the current through it. And this is actually something we can use then to solve circuits. So to start with, what I'd like to do is just show you a few VI curves for some uh, things that hopefully you're familiar with. So, uh, for example, we'll start with a VI curve. And uh, let's suppose that this, the element we're representing here, is a voltage source with a voltage Vs across it. So the idea behind a voltage source is that no matter what current goes through that voltage source, the voltage across it will always be Vs. So in terms of our Vi plot, or our Vi curve for this voltage source, uh, that's supposed to be a straight line. Imagine that that's a straight line. No matter what the current so no matter whether my current's up here, up here, at zero, negative, no matter what the current through that voltage source is, the voltage across it will always be V sub S. OK. Similarly, I can show, or I can think about a current source where the current through the source is I sub S. Again, if I draw a voltage current curve, a VI curve, then no matter what the voltage across my current source is, the current through it will always be I sub S. So its VI curve looks like this. Again, no matter what voltage I have out here, or if the voltage is negative, if the voltage is zero, no matter what voltage I have, the current will always be I sub S. OK. Let's look at a resistor, OK, where, again, this is the voltage across the resistor, and that's the current through a resistor. Again, if I draw my VI curve, in this case, I can use Ohm's law, which um, hopefully you already know. If you don't, go look it up. It's easy. 
Um, the current through a resistor is the voltage divided by the resistance. So that basically says that the relationship between I and V here is going to be a straight line with a slope of 1 over R. So that's the slope here. So basically a resistor then is a straight line. Okay, so we have sources and resistors. If uh, that's all we had, then uh, it turns out we'd actually be better off just using uh, uh, standard analysis techniques like uh, uh, Kirchhoff's laws, uh, nodal analysis, maybe mesh analysis if you're brave, to solve circuits. But once we have nonlinear elements, then those um, uh, the solution techniques that you're used to uh, end up having nonlinear equations, so you can't solve them using matrices and stuff like that. So let's illustrate how we could use these uh, techniques to solve a problem. So let's suppose that I have a circuit that looks like this. Oh, this purple is hard on the eyes. So this is my circuit element. I'll call it E. I still have a current, I, and I still have a voltage across this um, element. And now the question is, can I use these VI curves to solve for the circuit? And the answer is, it turns out, yes, I can do that quite nicely. So to do that, uh, let's actually tidy up a bit of space over here. And look at the VI curve first that I would get for the source and the resistor to, together. So again, this is my curve. If I look at the circuit, the relationship between V and I is um, given as follows. I can say that V is equal to V sub S minus I times R sub S. Okay, so I'm applying Ohm's law to get the voltage from here to here. That's the I times R sub S. And the voltage from here to here is just the voltage across the source minus the voltage across this resistor. And then I can solve this equation. I won't actually go through the steps, but I can solve it for I is equal to um, my mind just went blank. Okay, it's equal to V sub S over R sub S minus V over R sub S. Okay, so now this gives me a relationship between I and V, and it turns out it is a straight line. Uh, it has, uh, the intercept would be at V sub S over R sub S. So I know that this point here is V sub S over R sub S. And I know that the slope is minus 1 over R sub S. So that's the slope of this line. Okay, so again, to make sure it's clear what we've just done, this uh, VI curve is the VI curve that represents this part of the circuit. Okay, now my element E could also have a VI curve. And let's just suppose for the sake of argument that it has a VI curve that looks something like this. It's pretty flat. And then all of a sudden when the voltage starts to get positive, the current goes really, really fast. Uh, for those of you that have experience with uh, 
uh, nonlinear circuit elements, you'll recognize this as the VI curve of a, of a diode. Now, the voltage from here to here, this again is V, it's the same for this half of the circuit as it is for the circuit element. Okay, and the current flowing through this half of the circuit is the same as the current flowing through my element. So on the VI curve, or where the VI curve for this part of the circuit intersects the VI curve for the element, that will tell me actually what V and I would be for the circuit. So where these two lines intersect, that's the voltage across the element and the current through the element. It turns out this is a nice graphical way to solve these sorts of things. If the element were a resistor, so to muddy the water just a little bit and then I'll quit, if the element were a resistor, R, say this guy up here, then the VI curve for this guy is something like 1 over R, and if I wanted to find out then what the voltage across the resistor and the current through it would be, it would be the intersection of this, of these two lines. So you can actually solve linear circuits graphically, you typically don't. One last comment and then we're done. If I go back to my original picture, so I basically said we're going to lump this guy all together. We're not really going to care what's in this guy. It turns out that if this is made entirely of sources, voltage and current sources and resistors, I can represent that whole part of the circuit by a single source and a single resistor. This is called Thevenin's theorem. And uh, in a lot of textbooks, you'll see Thevenin's theorem used to solve circuits in ways that really don't make sense. The really important part of Thevenin's theorem is that I can take a whole bunch of resistor sources, resistors, voltage sources, and current sources, and represent them by an equivalent voltage source and resistance. So that means that if I, uh, I, I can find the VI curve for this guy, we've talked about how to do that, and then if I know the VI curve for this element, then I just have to draw the VI curve for this guy, find out where it intersects the VI curve for the element, and I've, I understand how the circuit works. So with that, we'll end, we'll end this video.